Hello everyone. Some of you know this channel uh, as Why Must I Sign In and Crazy, but uh, this is going to be the first part of a series of videos that is going to show bursts of apocalyptic games. Games, foregrounding, disaster, survival, often community, but not so much in this game. Uh, this game is The Long Dark. The premise of this game is that there has been a geomagnetic disaster and a pilot must survive on his own. Uh, or at least this is what I believe. I'm not sure how much uh, exposition the sandbox is going to give us. This is my first time playing the game. I want to experience the game with you together. Um, so... I'm going to be thinking about this game in the context of its relation to other apocalyptic disaster survival games. There's two options for your starting read, or no, no, multiple options for your starting area. I'm going to go for the first one, Mystery Lake, ideal for new players. Well, that sounds like me. But there are the other options are the Coastal Highway, the Pleasant Valley, the Desolation Point, the Timber Wolf Mountain, and then Random and Locked. There will eventually be a story mode for this game. This is a sandbox early beta. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Get the by the toe. If you pitch him, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Okay, I guess I'll go with the girl. Doctor Apocalypse. There we go. I am. Dr. Apocalypse. A mysterious geomagnetic storm has brought your plane crashing down into the northern Canadian wilderness. How long can you survive? What am I living for and what am I dying for are the same question. Margaret Atwood. Atwood being a Canadian author known for her post-apocalyptic novels, the Mad Adam trilogy, particularly Orcs and Crake, The Year of the Flood, and Mad Adam. It looks like my co-pilot here. Am I searching my co-pilot? The first thing I'm doing in this game is looting a corpse. The very first thing. What is this? Crow feather. 0.1 kilogram. Oh, it can help make an arrow. Sounds good. Hunting knife. Good quality knife with a stainless steel blade and wooden handle. Uh, I don't know what the star 90% means, but it's uh, almost probably going to be useful. Carbs. 250 calories. High fructose corn syrup. I'm definitely going to need that. Definitely going to need water. Best be prepared for anything. Fur firewood? Fur burns like firewood. Okay. And so here we are. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that there aren't any remains of the uh, crashed plane. But I'm willing to accept this for the moment. What the... I'm trying... Okay, shift is move faster, but there is a endurance bar. Dave's quiet clearing. So this is a Canadian-based game developed through Kickstarter in the Unity engine. Unity uh, being termed Unity because it combines this uh, open vector system... Uh, OpenGL with uh, a 3D set of assets, I believe. Not super familiar with the, the, the crunch of it, but its main appeal is that it has um, cross-platform appeal so that you can um, work on it for a Flash game or, you know, something that could be free to play for everyone that would be, you know, comparatively easy to develop over something else. So, like, when, in terms of my programming experience, which is not very much, I'm 
more familiar with very basic editors like the Starcraft Brood War math editor, things like this. Uh, I've looked at Galaxy Edit but found it very frustrating to use. Maybe one day I'll pop open Unity or try to see how accessible it is. It does mean that you tend to get stuff like this where when you look at it from certain angles, the, uh, you know, because the grass is just moving relative to my position. So sometimes it looks like it's sticking out of the side of the hill. But if you don't look too closely at things like that, this game is fairly beautiful. Uh, I like the, the purple base of the trees, the luminescence of the snow. Actually, for a Unity game, it's quite gorgeous. Probably should try to keep moving here. New location discovered, Lake Trail. Ah, wildlife, birds. Uh, I need a... Fingers oh. are numb. Okay. Canadian flag. Frozen lake. I'm presuming it's frozen anyway. Let's check that briefly before I go in. Let you, yeah, I can walk over the lake. Well, let's find this, uh, see what's going on with this abode. Alright. Camp office. Requires hats to break in. Okay, so, the, you know, the, the whole survival genre has become quite prolific. Uh, what's going on here? Starter. Don't have, oh, what is this? Fifty-five percent chance of success. Ninety-five percent chance of success. Uh, let's go ahead and not waste my one Tinder plug. Get a fire going. Okay. Whoa! Light effects going crazy. Oh, it's the uh, window up there. Um. So what I'm thinking is that the game that I got most invested in that was closest to this um, was actually This War Is Mine. Now the premise of This War Is Mine is very different than the premise of this game. Wherein This War Is Mine is fought in a city in a war zone where you have to deal with people trying to shoot you and with people coming by and helping you every now and then and other people trying to kill you and steal your stuff. And make fishing tackle, breaking that lake somehow. I don't think it, the fishing tackle will do me any good until I actually uh, uh, hello for a fake hit. Mm, this will come in handy. Bandage. No, 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 don't need to go outside right now. Maybe I should have waited on the fire actually, but uh, I'm not entirely sure where you see what your heat. I'm not sure. Probably useful. And so one of the raison d'etre of this game indicated in the Kickstarter was that they felt that although the survival genre has taken off, there was an oversaturation of um, urban environments. Seems quite heavy. I can come back for it later. Um, and so they wanted to make a game that would be in a wilderness environment. And so this is fact they can use this. They made the game. Uh, also a Canadian game, so that it was in case hey, eat it. I don't know how how hungry am I right now. Well I'm just gonna leave it there. It is cold. Maybe I'll find a way to cook it later. Can over here. I know where it is, it's right there. Here's my kitchen. I'm just claiming this place. 
Oh, you can't. No, no take backsies on starting a fire. Although I kind of probably should go and explore at some point. Wow. Oh, hello. What? A hmm. There was a geomagnetic disaster, and so I guess this person died of hypothermia. Huh. Oh, this is still quite serious. Of course, the lighting was better so I could see this art a little bit more. But that's the way it affects the trouble. I'll take it. Before I have an inventory somewhere that I can access. So I can touch some of this stuff. Oh, okay. I could have started my fire up here before I went to bed or, or something, I guess. What is that? I keep all the drugs on me for when I inevitably die to a wolf or something. Um, and so I do know that, you know, since this game has been, this, this game isn't even out yet, but I do think that there are other games that have at least segments that take place in a wilderness environment. Certainly there is a ton of games that predominantly take place in an urban environment. Um, but I think it's also the case that, um, Oh, it's probably, it's probably, what happened out here? It's also the case that there are a number of games that do have, um, wilderness elements, but that you kind of don't care. And so, what do I mean by that? Um, you know, if you're in Left 4 Dead 2, a lot of time maybe you're going to be in a sort of uh, outdoorsy environment, but you're going to be so busy spamming grenades and hilarious numbers of bullets at the hordes of zombies that who cares what environment you're in, really. It's just all backdrop. I mean, I, I know that sometimes it's like, get outside the prison or whatever so you can get to the car and uh, leave the place. Um, but really no one plays Left 4 Dead because they're particularly concerned about the environment. It's really about zombie bumping action, right? Blow away those zombies and try to avoid getting eaten by one of the big ones. But you know, you think of something like The Walking Dead by Telltale, and there certainly were chapters, um, at least in the second one, where you're primarily in a wilderness environment, or, you know, segments of other games like, um, the Last of Us, you know, toward the end of that game, there are segments where you, um, you take control over um, one of the characters, Ellie, and uh, you go hunting, right, because you need food to survive. And that's you know, in a wilderness environment. So there's definitely a lot of games that will have at least a segment in a wilderness environment. Um, but this one is like, well, we're, we're gonna really focus on expressing this place, this outdoors area where we will be able to sit there and look at the tree and say, you know, this looks like a tree. It's not just the backdrop for, um, this next set piece where a bunch of zombies are going to be coming out. We're going to focus on the idea of survival in this place. And so what I think is interesting about that is because it's this weird, it's like halfway to what, you know, people online would suggest is essential in any 
sort of disaster scenario, right? So when it comes to disaster scenarios, there's this fantasy of the individual explorer going out and surviving on their own. And most people would say this is a bad idea and unrealistic. Um, Because what you need is a group of people. You need a group of people who will have certain skills, be able to, to share work, so that you can get everything done in a day that you need done. And if you play a lot of these survival games, that's what you will realize, just thinking of everything that needs to be done in any given day. I was kind of hoping the storm was going to flood up in the hour I rested. Maybe I should just... I don't want to burn all the daylight here. Um, Probably need to explore the area a little bit more to get a sense of what I needed to do. Don't want to freeze to death. It looks like it's let up a little bit at least. So that's good. Uh, I'm going to get across here. Hopefully I won't die by sinking into the ice. Um, maybe there's going to be a already established fishing hole which I could use to start fishing uh, with my, my little wire and whatnot. Whereas other games will have you trying to survive, you know, in a highly urban environment. Okay, so I can make a fishing hole here. I can make a source of heat. Here is fishing tackle, sewing kit matches so this is not frozen I just drink it yeah, not bad do I have a max card calories There's the flag. You can tell which way you're going. There's a lot of little things out here, though. This is not quite the deep wilderness. This is a place that had settlement, but where the settlers, as it were, have vacated. And so a lot of these games present the fantasy of emptiness, right? This is one of the most important elements of apocalyptic games is the sense that you are alone, you're out on your own. And a lot of it is reconciling your own sense of work, your own sense of ego, your intrinsic will to live, which are important things for anyone to grapple with, especially people at certain parts of their life. You know, uh, I mean, I don't want to oversimplify matters too much here, but certainly... Um, it's the case that a lot of teenagers need to, at any given time, come to terms with what their life means to them. This door will not open, as far as I can tell. Um, and so I think that the apocalyptic genre certainly has a particular appeal for certain groups of people, uh, slightly more so than others. But I do think it also has this general intrinsic philosophical appeal of thinking about what you take for granted in life is one of the common themes, right? What, what do you take for granted in life? What elements of work do you feel detached from that you believe um, that you would struggle with? You know, what do you need to come back to? to appreciate the life that you don't have to get caught up in because of the conveniences of modernity. And so a lot of these games will often have this sort of multivalent, often antipathetic uh, relationship with the idea of modernity. And to what extent would life be better? Um, 
if disaster unfolded. And you get this sense of multivalence in a lot of novels, particularly uh, you think of something like the islands at the end of the world, and uh, there's this sense that no, as it could end up being useful. Oh, I'm, uh, am I getting full? I can't eat it right here. Why can I not eat it right here? No. I think I'm gonna need more fuel. I need, like, an axe. This seems like something that would be very useful and is very important to get early on. Um. What is the consequence of being overweight in terms of carrying too much stuff? Okay, so you can certainly, at some point I will need to start going around breaking everything. So I don't want to get, forget what all, what all areas I have broken stuff down in or not, right? Yeah, you need a hatch to break a lot of stuff down. Um, so far, I think it's curious that this game does emphasize being totally on your own and alone. Um, which, of course, saves them from having to program any sort of AI for other people, which probably, from a design standpoint, is a good place to start off with. Because there, there is so much of an issue a lot of the time. Well, let's see what my max calorie count is. Not. Not there yet. Two fifty. Two fifty is the max calorie count. Now I know. Shame that I had to waste the soda to get there, but I'd rather know now so that I can deal with that. I think the most important thing right now is to be scavenging around to find things so that I can get the tools I'm going to need to actually start getting some, some long-term survival stuff in place. So I remember games, you know, thinking primarily actually from The Last of Us, uh, not The Last of Us, rather, um, This War is Mine. And really it was always very important to get certain things set up very early and that's really the struggle with some of these games is that you don't necessarily know what tools you need to build early on to have long-term survival potential um, and you only know that when you don't have those things in your first or second or third or fourth playthrough okay so if I continue to just imagine the flag hut as my base of operations. I did rest for an hour earlier, but I guess she's getting tired. I feel like I'm playing the sentence. Which is also the way I actually started to feel about um, This War is Mine, is that you realize at some point that you are basically playing sims except you're actually trying to make your people survive rather than hilariously trying to find hilarious ways to kill them uh such as removing the exit to the pool and mm. then laughing okay as your um poor sims swim to their deaths and demise okay. is there like just always a newspaper in here i think it's procedurally generated right so it's going to have certain things just kind of randomly placed around. Which means if I get a bad set of starting conditions, I might never get what I need to really get going. I should probably go back to the workbench and see what my options are for building. So that I have a sense of what I need to prioritize when I'm trying to find what I need to, to survive for a, a prolonged period of time. Yeah, this is just a nice shot. Yeah. Screenshot it. Um, what is it, F12 for the Steam screenshots? I tend to just go with the, uh, I like having screenshots saved for OneDrive, personally. It's 
a little more convenient than having it save to Steam. Although I could probably have my Steam automatically save to OneDrive. Oh, whatever. Mm, more lines. Best be prepared for anything. More wood. Pack up nice for when the first one breaks. Cloth for accelerating. I think cloth, or actually, it sounds like cloth is used for bandages. Okay. Close the door, why not? <sighs> what is that red in the bottom left? Is that cold or fatigued? I'm worried it's cold, but I don't know. I need to find a place to rest. Okay, that's, that's less subtle. <laughs> okay, so there's another pathway that way. Didn't seem like there was a ton of further exploration options around there. I have not watched any streams of this game being played by the way, so this is all just completely so fresh for me. Cold. I just wanna lay down for a bit. Ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine percent on the bottom left does sound a bit concerning. But I still have daylight. You know, daylight is also a commodity. You know, fatigue is a commodity. Daylight is a commodity. But I can go and rest for an hour until I get a sense of what I even need to do. I want to check the workbench anyway to see what's going on there. Is I yeah I is inventory. That's fine. probably start leaving stuff in the hut so I'm not carrying everything around with me all the time if I can to see if that's even possible. I would guess it's possible. Okay, back inside. Yeah, I want to check the workbench first. Okay. Wound dressing. Torch. Mm, snare. Good for food. I'm not hurting on food yet. I am going to need to start thinking about that in the long run. Oh, this would be useful, but I would need rabbit pelt and cured gut. So I actually need to start catching things. What is cured gut going to be from? Cured deer hide. Is that going to be from deer? Bow. Arrow shaft. Simple arrow. Okay. But nothing that's going to make it easier for me to do anything other than really hunt. Most of the workbench stuff is for hunting. Problem is, I don't want to start a fire if I'm not going to cook. I feel like I... Why do I have so little... Oh, I see. It was like, I picked up all these rolls and all this other fuel. Why is it not showing up? But yes. Okay. But I should regain some amount of... Uh, Okay, let's see what happens when I rest for two hours. Well, I'm back to 100% and those two icons on the bottom left went away. So that's gotta be good. Probably go back and explore the other direction from the very start. 
So I know there's another way to explore across the lake. That's good. I'm losing some daylight. This just goes back more or less to the lake, I think. Maybe I should just double check. Or this is not the way I came. Is this the way I came? This might be the way I came. Stuff will come in handy. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, I forgot to unload. Okay, so I'm automatically wearing it. Automatically wearing it. I do have basic, basic boots. I'm, I do am just automatically wearing a lot of stuff. But I meant to leave some of this fuel stuff behind. A lot of it is not particularly heavy. <sighs> is there any ammo here? No, I don't have any ammo. Okay. Well, I definitely have not gone this way before then, so let's keep going. This is so far, so far been a very productive outing. I already have a gun. Now the... Yeah, so... Tired. Oh, if I burn... If I sprint too much, then I actually... Get into this red, which I guess is bad. Because then I'm tired. It's not entirely clear to me what the consequence of that is, other than not being able to sprint anymore, which is, of course, not great. Is this looks an awful lot like the cave that I spawned at. Yeah, so I, did I actually just run past a gun on the way out here? That's incredible. I can't believe I ran past the gun on my first outing. That's... Well, I, I doubled back and I found it. What I'm noticing is that you don't really get out of this red even if after your stamina bar goes up past the 50% mark. So I guess the idea is that if you don't want this distracting red eye in the bottom left of the screen and the uh, red in the uh, sprint bar, then you should not go below 25% or something. What is this color? Wait. Okay. There's another one. Stick. Sticks are good. Probably. Ten minutes to break down. Three hours of daylight left. After that, the wolves come out and they eat you. Probably. That would be my guess. Since there are wolves in the store page for this game. <laughs> I don't have to rest at the base of operations, even if I do plan to use it, and I don't even need to use that place as the base of operations if I find somewhere else with a workbench. The main reason to go back there right now is the workbench, to craft a bow or do other things like that. Need a hatchet. What was that sound? My level of fatigue is not really all that concerning right now, I don't think. Which means... And I can even... Wait, what? Oh, I see. It's like my sprint is broken or something? Or what the hell? I guess I'm just too tired to sprint. 
Wait, am I... Did I just go the long way around to... These are not the same cabins, right? I would think not. This has got to be a different way. Oh, you can stash everything in any backpack you find. Okay. I'm gonna open it in this backpack. Always another crate to break down. This place is like empty, which makes me a little bit concerned that I've already been here. Because otherwise I think I would have been finding stuff. So did I really just walk around get to the other side of the lake the really long way. Yep, I think that's what happened. Which means that going back this way should take me back to the base of operations. Maps would be handy here, but well. Walking on ice. Hope it's not um, so, so far, the, you know, the argument of the developers is that, okay, there's not any zombies, there's not going to be anything that's going to be from, like, a B-horror film. It's not exactly realism, though, right? The idea is that there's still going to be, um, do I have a map? Oh, hello. No afflictions. Freezing. Exhausted. Peckish. Thirsty. Feels like negative 12. Clothing bonus. Start fire. All this stuff. Okay. Interesting. So as you explore further on, the bedroll and fire probably becomes more important. Right now, I'm just going to make my way back to there. Probably have burned enough calories now to chow down on uh, nice sardines. Now there, you know, there's other Minecraft like exploration survival games, right? So there's these cheap free games where it's like, oh, you're at the bottom of the ocean and your submarine broke, but you still have a lot of the gear you need to survive at this little underwater outpost. So all you have to do is uh, find a way to survive, but Barracuda will randomly eat you if you uh, harass the, the little fish too much or, or whatever. Okay, this is definitely not where I thought I was going. That's not great. Can't sprint. No sprint for me. I can crouch, which I don't think I want to do right now. Guess I should have taken advantage of that first deer I saw with my initial knife and tried to go stab it. I bet, like, a joke of this game is going to be that you find the gun immediately, but never find a single bullet through the whole game. Yeah? No? No? Well, probably not, but... Seems like rare ammunition is going to be a recurrent theme. Atmospheric effects are very nice. There's where I was going. Uh, I got a little, just a little bit of a detour back there. But, uh... Oh, it's getting cold now. So, one of the innate, intrinsic appeals of games like this is the sense that our entire civilization, whether you're Canadian or American or whatever, um, can collapse. And so, people have, you know, got a sense of that with the, um... the 
the little depression, depending on what you want to call it. The big recession, that's that's what they, they go with. Um, wherein there was this sense that uh, the entire economy could collapse, right? That was the whole justification for spending these billions and billions of dollars to, to bail out banks and all this stuff like that. Um, was because of the threat that the world would be reduced to its most basic state because the economy would be totally reset. And so a lot of these games are still playing off this same underlying fear of sudden collapse. Which is not necessarily unreasonable, right? I mean, the idea that there are limits to the stability of our civilization is, is not an unreasonable fear. Um, can opener. Why do I need a can opener if most of my canned food can just be opened on its own? Alright, slate. Needed to warm up though. And I'm tired as heck, and I'm at 80% due to the combination of fatigue and cold. So, reclaimed wood, newsprint, wood matches, seems good. Don't fail, don't fail. But this game is, you know, em emphasizing that it's not that the economy collapsed or anything like this. No, it's not going to say the world itself would crumble on its own. No, it's the geomagnetic disaster, right? Not exactly supernatural, but it is. Um, Well, let's play it, why not? Oh, okay, it's still pitch black. Let's, uh... Let's go back to sleep. Oh, wait, I should not have wasted an hour of daylight like that. Whatever. Alright, it's morning. Oh, it's super dehydrated. Good drink. Oh, it's gone. My water is gone. Okay, I'm gonna need to, gonna need to find a way to uh, boil some stuff. Let's see something there. Still hungry, okay. Oh, here we go. Now I need, what is this, tomato soup. For tomato soup, I do need a can opener. Oh, let's not waste my dash, now that I finally have it back. So yeah, I guess it would be nice to warm it up, but I don't know that I have a grapple on cooking food yet. <laughs> I mean, what else am I going to use hooks for other than tackle right now? I want to go get a sense of how hard it's going to be to, to start fishing. Still hungry. Still hungry. Okay. I'll choose more than 
Okay, there we go. That's more like it. Okay, little bit of sprint. And then stop. And let it rebuild. So, this game is a lot more empty than the, the underwater terrible fishbowl one that I was playing a while back. Didn't stream that one, I was just trying it out. Um, and so it's tranquil, it's peaceful playing it this way. You do worry that you're gonna get bored, but right now there's still like, I still feel like I'm just trying to get a, a grapple on the game. And there's still a whole lot of terrain to explore. And that is... Uh, that is an animal right there. And I, I still have this sense that I haven't yet faced the, uh, the greater threats. And I once again forgot to dump any gear. Ay ay ay. Okay. Should I try to see if I were here? Oh, I'm messing with us. There was one with a door. Maybe that would have been better. I'm not ex entirely sure how much of a difference it's going to make. Because I don't get a clear sense of the area of effect for these fires. The first of many. Oh hey, I survived a day, but I failed to get that fire going. So that sucks. It just it just wrecked the the match. I feel like there would there would be easier to find matches, but maybe not. You know, all you'd have to do is like find one lighter. That would last you for a while. You know, with all these little cabins around here. You know, so far I haven't run out yet, so we'll figure it out. There we go. Alright, now let's do some work here. Okay, I have cleared a ice fishing hole. And I don't know how many hours of daylight I have left, that's not great. Well, let's see what happens if I fish for... Six hours? I don't know. Whoa! Cool! Okay, my, my temperature is going down. I'm catching a fish, that's great, but I need to like... I'm not gonna let I'm not sure I'm gonna make it. I mean, is there any way to stop fishing? Am I going to die because I... I... Oh, oh goodness. I'm just gonna... <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, good to know that the, that is a way to die. I managed to to die by fishing myself to death. That's a way to go right there. You know, I think that in all the survival games I played, this is the first time I have fished myself to death. Definitely never did that in the Resident Evil series, although, you know, there were times when you do fight fish in those games. You know, giant mutated fish that want to eat you and devour your brain. Um... But no, actually just starting to fish and then sitting there and freezing to death. Definitely never did that in uh, in The Last of Us, and This War is Mine, 
not even in papers, please. I don't think you can even fish in papers, please. That's, uh, yeah. So, that was fun. It sort of forms a natural stopping point. I have not yet fought a wolf, and I'm not... I'm, I mean, I have to come back to this game because I haven't died to a wolf yet. You haven't really played this game as far as I know until you die to a wolf. That would be my guess. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there since that is, you know, officially my first playthrough. Kind of a silly way to go, but uh, good to bear in mind for the future. Do not overcommit to fishing. I was like, oh, what if I... I was thinking, you know, like in real life, if you go fishing, you, you know, it might be multiple hours before you catch anything. Uh, and I figured I'd still have plenty of daylight left, but no, you gotta make sure you have, um, uh, enough heat for that duration. So, I hope you guys, uh, enjoyed watching my first playthrough. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and comment or, or like or go even subscribe, um, I'm not telepathic, and I, I don't know necessarily what all you guys might like to see. So, let me know. Alright, I'll see you guys.